The behavior of an Ansible installation can be customized by modifying settings in the Ansible configuration file. The Ansible package provides a base configuration file located at etsy ansible ansible.cfg. As we showed in the previous video, we can get the default configuration file by triggering Ansible version in a folder where no other configuration file exists. This is the default directory on which the configuration file exists. So Ansible looks for an ansible.cfg file in the user current home directory. The configuration is used instead of this default file. If it exists and if there is no ansible.cfg in the current working directory, the home directory ansible.cfg will be used. If I include an ansible.cfg in the working directory, then this file will be used. So if an ansible.cfg exists in the directory in which the ansible command is executed, it is used instead of the global file or the user's personal file. This allows administrators to create a directory structure where different environments or projects are stored in separate directories with each directory containing a configuration file tailored with a unique set of settings. For example, in my working directory on which I include different folders, if when I have different ansible.cfg files inside each folder, then the settings are different across those projects and folders. Ansible only uses settings from the configuration file with the highest precedence. Even if other files with lower precedence exist, their settings are ignored and not combined with those in the selected configuration file. For example, in my folder, only the configuration that is mentioned in this file will be used. Let's now see an example and see the configuration file that I have already created here. So if we edit this file, we can see that I have included some commands under defaults directive and privilege escalation directive. So this the defaults directive, you can see that includes some values as the inventory, where the inventory is located, the remote user, which is the name of the user to log in on the managed host, on the host that on the clients that Ansible is managing. If not specified, the current username is used. The ask pass it mentions whether or not to prompt for an SSH password. It can be false if using SSA public key authentication. So as we will work with SSA with public keys, we, we have this value currently to false. The privilege escalation section uh, identifies the, the escalation that will be done in the client machine. So they become uh, the become a directive is set to true in order to become root in the managed host in the client and perform some commands that require sudo privileges. The become method is sudo, but su can be used also. The become user is the user which will take the administrative privileges. For example, I'm running the commands as a user student but on the client machine i want to become root or another user that has administrative privileges in order to run the commands on the client for example if i'm using an rm command on the client i cannot do this by using a normal user i i should have advanced privileges and also the become ask pass option which indicates whether the uh, password will be asked on the become. So we, we have this uh, value as false. In my lab, I have created two CentOS boxes. If I ping those CentOS boxes, you can see that they belong to a local network and I can ping them in order to start working with them using Ansible. So these machines, have 
also placed on each hosts of this Ansible control node in order to have FQDN resolving for these machines. I will go now and establish an SSH connection from my Ansible control node to those client machines. I will also go and add them on my inventory. So at first, let's add them on my inventory using a new group. group. I will name this group clients and I will add here CentOS box one and CentOS box two. I will save this file and then I will go and establish an SSH connection. In order to do that, I will first create my SSH keys on this user. The, the keys will be placed in the default di directory of the user. I am okay with that. And I will not use a passphrase at this example. So I now have my SSH keys that are stored there. The ID RSA and ID RSA.pub. And I can now go and copy this this certificates on the CentOS boxes in order to establish SSH connection through the managed node and the clients without credentials. So I will go and try to copy those keys. I will enter the password and when I add the password correctly, I will see that the keys have been added to the machine. So I can now go and SSH to this machine. And as you will see, I now am connected now through SSH on this box without a password prompt. Keep in mind that in order to copy the SSH keys from this machine to CentOS box one, the user student should exist on the CentOS box machine and also on CentOS box two machine as I'm copying though the IDs of this student to the same to the same user student in those boxes. I will do the same procedure for my second box. And I will then use the ping module in order to ping this group that I named clients using minus M parameter on Ansible. I'm specifying that I want to use the module with the name ping and ping the clients group. So as you can see here, the command has been executed successfully, but we get that we are missing sudo password as this user, the student user, has no sudo privileges on the client's machines. In order to resolve this issue, you should go and connect to SSH on CentOS box and on sudoers file for student, add this line with also no password directive so it doesn't require the password of user root uh, when a student needs to execute uh, commands using sudo. After this, after this addition, you can go and ping your Ansible clients and you will verify that the connection with Ansible is correct. As we specified the ping module and we got the pong result.